Good morning, folks. We've got the death of a sunspot, cosmic rays continue, earthquake prediction, ocean news, and the internal skeleton of Earth. We begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day was quiet. We've still got the bright active regions, but they are not flaring. It is early in the sunspot cycle, and they're taking the when in Rome approach. The solar wind is the more relevant story, still bottomed out, and looking at the KP green down at the bottom line, we can see that the lone one score is all that keeps a run of zeros off the board. This is, of course, the other bad end of the scale from solar storms, the dearth of solar pushback against galactic cosmic rays. That health alert from yesterday is ongoing. Quickly looking at the sunspots here, and we find a small, undeveloped grouping on the incoming limb, and a complete decay of all but the lead umbra in the larger group we've watched the last few days. Let's see the death of a sunspot here. Too much spread, not enough magnetic power behind them, and they spread until they faded and decayed away. Seismicity cranked back up into magnitude 6 range yesterday, but luckily did so at the transition zone of the mantle. No damage. Speaking of earthquakes, folks, this is the best pre-earthquake anomaly team from Pakistan. They're all about it. This team is one of the ones that cited my paper on forecasting earthquakes from 2015, the one with NASA's Uyan and Ohio State's Holloman as co-authors. Here, they are looking at the thermal anomalies, OLR, which is one of the primary methods we use at QuakeWatch.net. An interesting note, the Larsen C ice shelf iceberg has morphed only slightly in the three years it's spent at sea, but now it's heading right at the South Georgia Island. This shows you the primary south pathway for cold freshwater melt to enter the Atlantic, by the way. New animation here from NASA shows the uptake versus emission of CO2. This actually combines two of the greater sources of uncertainty and error in climate models, bias surrounding CO2 and what exactly the oceans are doing with it. Funny story up next combining two fields of theory about extinctions. One is much closer to reality than the other. One says volcanic cooling caused icy conditions in the extinctions, and the other had said the CO2 emitted from the volcano eventually led to major warming. They decided they weren't going to fight and just say both happened, a rapid cooling and rapid warming. Great science, guys. Last but not least, we've been taking a lot of looks inside the Earth at the large-scale internal structure, the conductive density lobes pluming out from the core mantle boundary. There is a Pacific plume and an African plume. We know that it was just recently when they announced that 2017 marked another magnetic field change acceleration that it was in the Pacific plume, but before that the majority of the developments had been under Africa and up through the South Atlantic anomaly. Today, they are trying to nail down the shape of the African plume, and they are noticing it's not so easy. Everything from base heavy to thin and base detached seems to show up in the different models. Still have a long way to go to understand them. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your latest Deeper Look episode details how this internal structure can torque the planet. It's another reason Veritasium was wrong in calling Earth symmetrical about the axis. Since early October, nearly all of your Deeper Look episodes have been on catastrophism to gear up for the paper version of the next end of the world. That's available at otf.cells.com. The latest Deeper Look is one of the big secrets from that new book, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.